Did you know, however, there is a gender identity that is linked to the seasons? This is called gender season. And this is a gender identity I've only just learned about. It's a micro identity. It's not an identity that I have ever heard discussed before. It's a new one for me. Gender season is an individual who explores their gender identity in relation to a season or all the seasons. So this might be somebody whose gender expression and identity is linked to one season. So for example, winter. Or this might be somebody whose gender identity and expression changes depending on the season. <laughs> That is the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Jesus Christ. Now, there's not a whole lot that needs to be said about that first clip we just saw. I think we're all well aware of the mental health crisis going on, not just in this country, but around the world. So let me catch you guys up real quick with what's been going on here. My computer crashed the other day, so I had to go out and get a new one. And you're probably going to notice that the audio and visual are quite a bit different in today's video than they have been in previous videos. And the thing that's been driving me absolutely crazy is the microphone. I can't for the life of me get it sounding right. And I've been messing around with the settings for the past two days. So if the sound is a little janky in today's video, guys, I do apologize. Please just bear with me. I'm going to continue to mess around with the settings and possibly go get a new microphone in the next couple of days. But I have an obligation to keep you guys updated on the happenings of Clown World. And we got a lot to catch up on. So instead of wasting any more time fidgeting around with the microphone settings, let's get into it. Now, if you place your attention on the screen for a moment. So I featured this photo of this fellow with the five o'clock shadow and Barbie tube top in a video a few months ago, right around the time when the Barbie movie came out. So some of you may have seen it already. It's making its rounds on the interwebs again. So for those of you that haven't seen it yet, here's an up close and personal look at the modern day Barbie. You're welcome. What is your fucking problem, man? Huh? Let's keep this party rolling with everybody's favorite paid establishment show, The Young Lad Harry, gleefully cheering on a communist takeover of this country. It's quite alarming, actually. Roll it. Listen, Donald Trump's first criminal trial started today. Day one is over of the first criminal trial ever for a president, a former president. And the main takeaway for me is, while President Biden was working for the American people today, getting stuff done for us and taking care of big issues, Donald Trump was in court facing 34 felony charges. That's a difference. Let's, let's vote for Joe Biden, the guy who's working for us, not the guy who might be a convicted felon in two months. The truth is, you're still a dork and I can still kick your ass. All right, next up we have this portly fellow who says that white people need to leave black people, and I quote, the f alone. Then he works himself up into such a frenzy over this imaginary racist narrative that he literally starts crying like a little baby. Now, this next clip is kind of long. It's about two and a half minutes long, but it's definitely worth the watch. Roll it. Why is it that white folks support anti-blackness racism and white supremacist culture in so many goddamn fucking ways why is it that we support it through our silence our defensiveness our denial that code of silence let's not talk about it let's ignore it all that fucking gymnastics that defensiveness the fucking anger the passive aggressiveness the stereotyping the overt, covert racist, all the shit that we do, the gaslighting, all that fucking shit that we do as white people. Why can't we just leave black people the fuck alone? Why? Because we were taught that shit. It's our culture. White supremacist culture is American culture. It's European culture. We see ourselves as overseers. We ourselves as entitled to control and judge black people. White Americans wanted, back in the day, we demanded black people be segregated, right? So we segregated black people for, so, okay, great. We're going to make our own shit. They started doing great. What did we do? We fucking burned their communities down to the ground. And you got to sit in your fucking silence. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for not giving a fuck. 
every single one of you that can't talk about it, that spews fucking racist narratives, stereotypes, denial, gaslight. That's not their reality. Telling black people what the fuck they should think, feel, do, be. Fuck you. Do better. Reject your fucking training, your indoctrination. Question your own goddamn morality racially for once in your fucking life. I'm tired. Are you crying? I'm tired of what my people have done, what they continue to do. I'm sick of it. There's no crying. I'm tired of seeing people suffer. I'm tired of the fucking inequality. And you ought to give a fuck too. That guy's got a serious weight problem. Go home, start exercising. So my advice to that gentleman we just heard from is, sir, at your age and we'll call it weight class, it's not good for your heart to get yourself all worked up like that, especially when you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Anyway, next up. So this lovely young lady is wondering why she couldn't get hired at TJ Maxx. I'm trying to sound like Captain Obvious here, but look in the mirror. Roll it. So I wanted to come on here and talk about something that is really starting to annoy me. So I applied for a job at TJ Maxx a few weeks ago and they denied my application. They couldn't even call me. They just sent me some automated email. So I went in today and I was like, so what was the reason I didn't get hired? And she was like, oh, like, you just, like, don't have enough experience. There was candidates that had, like, more experience than you. And, you know, I asked her if it was about my tattoos, obviously, because I know a lot of places don't like tattoos. She said that wasn't the reason. I don't feel like that's true, but whatever. I'll leave it at that. So... I'm just wondering how, like, teenagers and young adults who haven't had a job before, um, how are they supposed to get employed if these places are only hiring people with experience? So, younger people just can't get a job because they haven't worked enough? So, like, they'll deny a 16-year-old a job because they don't have enough work experience like it just doesn't make any sense to me why why would you do that to yourself now we're constantly being told by people in the trans and non-binary community that we shouldn't be assuming anyone's pronouns that if we don't know what a person's pronouns are we should ask well this fella here sasha who is a biological man that identifies as a trans woman says the exact opposite because we shouldn't be asking people what their pronouns are. Make up your damn minds. Roll it. So I had an interesting uh, engagement today. Uh, if you don't know, I'm a cleaner. I go around people's like houses and clean. Whoa, you have a deep voice. Um, and it was the husband there. And uh, he started talking to the boss that was there. And then he said, oh, sorry, uh, what's, your, what's your name? And I said, oh, I'm Sasha. And then he said, oh, uh, what, what, what pronouns do you use? And it caught me off guard because all of my years, tr like, like five years transitioning, um, I've never had anyone come up to me and ask me for my pronouns. And then I kind of like stood there like, um, why do you need to know my pronouns? Um, and this just puts in perspective that he feels he was doing the right thing by asking me my pronouns. Oh my God, I've got a bug on my face. Um, but it was actually the, the, the complete polar opposite. It was offensive because I, I, you know, I said to him, I said, you know, what do I look like? Do I look like a woman? Maybe I don't look like a woman to you. You know, what do you think my pronouns are? Like, what, you know, why do I look the way I do? And it, it's kind of obvious, isn't it? That's it, hold it right there. 
pronoun trouble. Real quick, before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to let this loop on the screen. Now, if this young lady just got up and danced and moved around like this for an hour a day, she may not be in this precarious situation. But unfortunately, she just might be too little too late. Anyway, today's video is being brought to us by our good friend, Deshaun Charles. You will recognize him in the comment section as the shizzle. Deshaun, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video, sir. I really appreciate the kind words and support. So once again, today's video sponsor is Deshaun Charles. Now, if you'd like to sponsor the next video and help support the channel, there is a PayPal link in the description box below, and I will say your full name as a sponsor of said video unless stated otherwise by you. All right, get this young lady off the screen, please. I can hear those spandex screaming for help. Oof. Yeah, she was a big girl, sir. Now, it would appear that the woke mind virus has infected one of the great actresses from back in the 80s and 90s, Molly Ringwald. You may remember her in movies like Sixteen Candles, Pretty in Pink, and The Breakfast Club. Movies she says aren't diverse enough. In fact, they're too white. Roll it. Those movies, the movies that, you know, are I'm so well known for, they were very much of a time, you know? And, and if you were to remake that now, I think it would have to be much more diverse. And it would have to be, um, you know, it, you couldn't make a movie that white. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, those movies are really, really very white. <laughs> and, and they don't really represent, um, you know, what it is to be a teenager in a school in America today, I don't think. So, you know. What the hell did you just say? It, you couldn't make a movie that white. <laughs> now, now, those movies are really really very white. That's just self-centered and racist. You need to shut the f up. So this next clip is probably the most alarming thing we're going to hear in today's video. And people like this young lady, they're starting to run for office and they're bringing their alarming ideas with them. Roll it. I think we should abolish private property. Really? Yes. You don't think anyone should be able to own property? Um, I think that as things exist, squatting should be allowed because people own property. Property shouldn't just sit empty, and if they are, they should be seized by people who need them. We should work towards a world where uh, people can have housing that's not based on how much money you have or how much access to capital or resources. It should just be a basic resource. And so if squatting is a means to, like, obtain that necessary right, that, like, intrinsic dignified right, which is not a human right, but access to housing is. And squatting as something that's illegal, I think the legality of it should be usurped for the necessity of access to material resources. Like, What did you say? What the f*** did you just say? I think we should abolish private property. No offense, but it sounds like some f***ing commie gobbledygook. All right, guys, we're going to be wrapping it up with this clip of Joyless Reed, the race lady over at MSNBC. Now, when I said the last clip was probably the most alarming thing we're going to hear in today's video, scratch that. What Joy Reed says is probably the most alarming thing we're going to hear in today's video. Anyway, guys, once again, I apologize for the sound and the audio in today's video. The microphone still sounds terrible, but I am working on it. I promise slowly but surely we'll get there. So thank you guys so much for bearing with me. I really appreciate it. Anyway, things are clearly getting very crazy out there, guys. So please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Till next time. Love you guys. Peace. Roll it. In prison. But for me, there is something wonderfully poetic about the fact that despite the fact that even if convicted, he's not going to go to prison, the first person to actually criminally prosecute Donald Trump is a black Harvard grad, the very kind of person that his former staff, the people who worked for him, Stephen Miller, et cetera, want to never be at Harvard uh, Law School. But he was.
and he came out and graduated, he's prosecuting you, Donald, and a black woman is doing that same exact thing in Georgia, and a black woman forced you to pay a $175 million fine that's out now also in question because the people who put it up, that might not be legit. Donald Trump is being held to account by the very multicultural, multiracial democracy that he's trying to dismantle. And for me, there's something poetic and actually wonderful about that. It hmm. says something good about our country that we're still capable of having that happen. Go DEI. My DEIs are bringing it home on today. Hmm. Shut the f*** up, okay? Shut the f*** up. And you ain't black.